Well then, uh, I'm a little late to the party, I will admit, but uh, a lot of you guys have wanted to know what my thoughts on the whole situation about EA purchasing Codemasters recently for a whopping $1.2 billion. Um, Codemasters, next time I go in for testing, you'll shout on the drinks, yeah? Cool. So, um, yeah, it's pretty crazy news what's been happening. Uh, normally, I'm used to uh, F1 silly seasons, but this is uh, the F1 game silly season. Um, it was only a matter of weeks ago where Take Two were going to buy out Codemasters, but then um, EA have stepped in and have sniped them and have uh, done the deal, apparently. Now, it's I don't know if Take Two are going to respond to that. Um, even if they do, I feel like EA will outbid them even further and uh, take the crown of owning Codemasters. So, what does this mean now for the F1 game franchise? Um, are we going to see... <laughs> I saw some silly, absolutely silly responses on Twitter. So much negativity as well. I'm actually... I feel like I'm in the minority. I feel like this is going to be a good thing, hopefully. Um... You know, I saw some people say, oh, you're going to have to pay £5 to do a pit stop. You're going to have to pay to take new tyres. You're going to have to pay to, I don't know, <laughs> just do anything, basically. But people said the same thing about Take Two. So, I mean, what do you guys want? <laughs> what's what's the ideal scenario? I think just in, in terms of gaming, so many people are so negative. Um, like, what is the ideal scenario for you? Like ask them. I don't think they'll come up with anything. So, um, basically, I don't think much will change, to be honest. Um, it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. You know, an acquisition of a company takes a very long time to uh, to facilitate. Um, it's definitely not going to affect F1 2021, which is, uh, for the most part, you know, we're coming up to Christmas now, and, you know, all of the game modes and everything will have been locked down for next year's game. The development for that will be mostly done. Um, you know, because we know how, how the, the development cycle works now. They've got two teams now, Codemasters, on the F1 side of things, working on two games simultaneously. Like, they're already developing F1 2022. If you don't know that, then, you know, you're living under a rock. Like, so, yeah, it's going to take a while before uh, EA get their claws in, essentially. What I hope is that they'll just give Codemasters the facilities, the resources... Uh, the talent that Codemasters need to continue the upwards trend that they've been uh, going along for the last couple of years. Because the F1 games were a bit rocky not long ago. Uh, F1 2014, F1 2015, um, you know, they weren't great games. But since, you know, F1 2015, 16, 17, they've been adding. They've been, things have just been getting better incrementally, uh, especially on the single player and, and, and career mode side. Uh, online has been getting better. We've seen the introduction of F1 Esports, and that's been uh, revolutionary for the online side of things and uh, getting support from F1, getting the teams involved. Overall, life has been very good for the F1 game franchise, and especially, you know, this year, 2020, we've seen, you know, half the grid of F1 drivers playing the F1 game over the course of lockdown, and um, things were going amazing. Um, and I only see that trend continuing because the games are just getting better year on year. 2020 is the best game we've ever had. You know, my team, creating your own team, the facilities, doing all that stuff was insane. The marketing for this year's game was crazy as well. We've seen so many big mainstream YouTubers playing the game. Uh, some people even without even being paid to play the game, like Zerka from the Sidemen was playing it. Um, so many people. It's, it's ridiculous. It was very mainstream, the F1 game this year. And I think EA have seen that, and I'm like, yeah, I want a slice of the pie, um, because at least on their side, the racing game side, EA's doesn't have the best track record. Um, Need for Speed is uh, Need for Speed, sorry, has been a bit rocky over the last few years, and I think, you know, acquiring Codemasters, uh, learning from you know what they've been doing right and what they've been uh, doing the last few years, I think will really help them. The worry, though, on the other side of the fence is that they might take some talent from Codemasters and apply them into their other areas. Uh, I was doing a video with uh, Theo Black Panther. I'll leave a link to that video 
down in the description. But um, basically, he was saying that um, they closed down uh, Ghost for the Need for Speed franchise, and they've now moved over to Criterion Games. And that was solely because they didn't have enough uh, talent in Sweden, in their old studio, to... To, to make the games that they wanted to. They needed more UK talent. They were trying to get more and more people involved. Um, but in the end, they had to shut the developer down and, and move across. And, and so the worry is, is that they'll take people from Codemasters because Codemasters are pretty much solely based in the UK. They have two different um, bases that they work their games from. Uh, one, the main one being in Birmingham, which is predominantly the F1 team. Then they have one in Southam, which is... Uh, Made up of a little bit of the F1 team, but also the Dirt and Grid team. You know, the smaller teams that work on the other racing games that Codemasters do. Um, that's the worry, that they take away some of that talent. And uh, that's the last thing I want to see, because the, the talent that is at Codemasters is amazing. I, I love the people that work at Codemasters. I've been there. I've tested their games over the last few years. I've, I've been there for... Uh, press events. I've met a lot of the people that work on the games. They're very passionate, very talented people, and to see them uh, taken away from uh, the franchise that you and me, we all love, um, would be very um, disheartening. Especially the handling guys. I love the handling guys. They, the, the, the game is getting a lot better year on year, so um, that's the last thing you want to see. We don't want to have talent ripped away and have the games go in a more arcade direction. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm sorry if I am, but um, I'm just kind of getting everything off my chest. I don't have a, a, a set um, guideline as to how this video is going to go. I'm just kind of rambling off the top of my head, essentially. So, yeah. Let's let's hope that uh, it only means good things for Codemasters. Um, like I said, it's going to take a little while for things to, uh, to change uh, in the way of the F1 game. Uh, maybe F1 2022, 2023 more likely when we're on the properly into the next gen uh, consoles and we're looking at potentially a new uh, engine for the physics. Uh, whether they go down the frostbite route uh, of EA, hopefully they stick to the Ego engine or whatever it is we have for, for F1, uh, but just developed further. Uh, we are due a new engine. We have been running the same one since 2015. When the new gen consoles came out, oh, the current gen, or well, the old gen now, came out in 2014 or 15 or whatever it was. So we are doing an upgrade, and um, the timing of that with EA could be interesting. Uh, it will be interesting to see which way they go with that. I'm hoping that they go down the Codemasters route, and maybe the Ego engine can move over to um, Need for Speed and stuff like that. Because I, I'm not a big fan of the Need for Speed uh, handling model. Uh, if they can have a bit of the Codemasters touch, that would be that would be nice. Okay, I'm back. Yes, what does this mean for the F1 game? What would I like to see changed? Basically, the online side of things is lacking a lot. Um, I, that's no, I've made that no secret uh, on my channel, on Twitter and stuff, in my videos. Um, all the love has been going to career mode lately. Uh, last four or five years, that's where the predominant features have uh, and time and resources have been going. Hopefully with a bit of EA influence, we can see online supported a whole lot more. I know the, the development team for the online side of things in the F1 game is, it was really small. Like a few years ago, it was only two people. Two people working on the online. I'm, I bet you bottom dollars a lot more now but there still needs to be more support in that area. So a bit of the EA, EA touch would be nice. Yes, they're going to sprinkle in more microtransactions, which um, you don't have to buy them. That's 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 the reality. But if they put more time and love into online, I think, I think they'll see more benefit. That's the thing with Codemasters. They've always uh, preferred online... Uh, they've always preferred career mode because that's where the playtime is. That's where the players go. Um... But the reason why they all go to career mode is because career mode gets all the love and all the features, whereas online kind of gets nothing. Um, I'll make a separate video about this, but the online spectator replay cameras are pretty bad, and it's holding back F1 Esports now at this point. Uh, we need replays. We need savable replays. Uh, we need to go back in time, see like proper highlights of the races. It just needs a lot more support, basically. But anyway, I want to see online have a lot more support. I want to have... Proper online 
uh, leaderboards, statistics, way more customization, uh, being able to completely edit your cars, edit your driver's suit, uh, helmet and stuff, um, more online uh, unlockables. Um, yes, they've delved into it now in the last year or two with the, uh, the podium pass, which has been nice, but they still need to work into that further. And EA will exploit that even more. They'll be able to make more money out of that, which, um, yeah, it is what it is, but it'll help the game grow if it is more profitable. So, you know, it's one of those um, necessary evils, I would say. But, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, EA servers uh, will be better for the online experience for the F1 games. We'll have to wait and see. Need for Speed uh, have crossplay. They're under EA, so it would be incredible for crossplay to become a thing for the F1 games because we know that the player base isn't the greatest, especially when comparing to those other sports titles, and especially PC. Trying to host a PC open lobby just. Uh, yeah, it requires a tweet every single time because the player base is so is so low. To pull everybody together would be great, especially with next-gen consoles and the hardware getting closer. Together with PC um, means that we should have, hopefully, the same experience across all platforms, um, unlike previous older games where PC and Xbox and PlayStation felt completely different. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent now, but that's the gist. Basically, I want to see the best F1 game made possible. Um, hopefully it'll be a good thing for those other titles that Codemasters make as well. Um, they have been a bit shaky with their other games, and I think that's the whole reason why EA have bought Codemasters, is for the F1 game franchise itself. It's been on a massive up uh, lately, and um, to have that under their fold will be massive for, for EA, essentially. To have F1 and FIFA, you know, two of the biggest sports in the world globally, uh, will really add to their portfolio. But, um... Yeah, hopefully this will mean more budget, more resource... I nearly said resource points. More resources for those smaller games, which don't do so well. So I'm talking about, like, the Dirt uh, Fives of the world. The you know, Micro Machines and... Uh, what was that? Remastered Grid that they did. There's been a lot of flops over the last few years, so hopefully a bit more uh, resources will help those games um, flourish. Uh, alongside the F1 games, but only time will tell. Let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comments. Um, hopefully this means only good things. Yes, we're going to get more uh, microtransactions and, and stuff like that, but hopefully the online support uh, only gets better. Um, the only way is up for the online side of things. Career mode will continue to get the love for the time being as um, that's the main money maker for uh, you know, the F1 games at the moment, so We'll see how that goes. But yeah, like I said, not too much is going to change, at least in the immediate future. So I don't think there's any need to panic. Um, I guess it's more in the medium-term future whether what direction they decide to go in. Are they going to try and make it super profitable with microtransactions? Will F1 Ultimate Team be a thing like in FIFA? Um, but the thing I'm most worried about is uh, them pulling talent out of Codemasters and putting it into like Need for Speed or other departments, other games and stuff. So... Hopefully, it only gets bolstered, and this can only mean good things for the F1 game franchise. Um, it's on a massive up. Esports is uh, only helping that, and the support from the real-life drivers as well has, uh, has really helped. So, I think we're on to a winning formula, and um, I just want to see the best for the F1 games, and hopefully, you guys do as well. Um, to all those people who said um, <laughs> the F1 game license should go to EA, well... Here we go. Let's see what happens. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you need to see plenty more racing game content. Like I said, I'm going to make a video talking about F1 2021 specifically, what I want to see out of it, both from an online side of things, career mode side of things. Um, thinking about making a video on the F1 Esports series as well, my thoughts on that and how it can be improved. If you do like these discussion videos, please, le please let me know because um, I find them quite fun. So... We'll uh, get the discussion going, but uh, hopefully there's nothing I've missed. If there is, I'll chuck it in the description or the, or the comments or something like that. Anyway, until the next one, guys. I'll see you next time.